Good kitten internet. Uh, let's. I can show you stats in the force really fast, but I'm not really going to be dealing too much with that. Uh, in fact, there's a chance I might even not even get a chance to battle this video. Anyway, welcome back to the area of um, the game that we actually are aware of. So first off, I need to go to Gallum. So if you remember before, this gate was closed. Here, yeah. Evil shot. Hey, it has the word evil in it. I wonder if it's cursed. So, the way the game tries to get you to use cursed weapons, uh, helps if I give it to somebody who can actually use them, is by making him ludicrously overpowered. You get how much of an attack difference that is for Chester. It's a plus 22 attack off of the great shot and minus five defense. So, I've heard people try to argue that the cursed weapons are actually useful for equipping. If you've watched my video of Beyond the Beyond, you understand why I have problems with the idea of using cursed weapons. Red Baron is Lemon. He was running around and crying for somebody to kill him. Kind of sad. We've got the guard towers from way back in the beginning of the game. Remember this area? Remember that cell that we started in and had Slade? Uh, Slade was from that cell? Brings back memories if you've actually watched the video or No Shining Force 2. So we're back in Gallum. This is just plain ordinary Gallum. Uh, not much here has changed. It's not zero, but not much here has changed. My boyfriend hasn't returned in the war. Hope he's alive. We've already looted everything in Gallum beyond what we just grabbed. Grand Seal? I didn't know anyone survived that earthquake. Hey, look. There's the caravan here. I heard from a soldier that Yeel is haunted. He said that he heard the sound of a piano. So there may be something in Yeel. A hole. Lemon made that hole. He jumped off the top of the castle, but he didn't die! Imagine how painful it must be to, like, jump off the roof, take damage, make a hole in the ground, but not die. Anyway, we have a couple of things we need to repair. Um, evil, or not evil shot, um, the heat axe and the power ring we need to repair. There's the power ring. Honestly, we probably don't even need to bother with the heat axe, but I'm gonna do it anyway. That's a little expensive. Also, I need to not forget to buy a guardian staff for, um... What's his face? Um... Rude. He had an intra staff, but he wasn't actually using it. And guardian staff is what I want anyway, because plus five defense. Um, that may be changing soon. Remember, this is the church that... Um, Sheila's fiancé was supposed to be a part of. Sheila's fiancé got killed by lemons, so... Whoops. Do you know about the Statue of the Devil? Or the Stat... Stoutu. Stoutu of the Devil. I don't know if I've ever noticed that typo. It appeared at the Ancient Tower. So, yep. If we go too much further to the south, we're going to get into a battle. But I don't want to do that right now. In fact... What I want to do is start grabbing my mithril because it's time. All right, we're going to start shoving it way down here. I love how... Um, they mirror image Sir Astral's portrait for some reason. I don't quite understand why. Anyway, we need all the Mithril. In fact, I think we might be missing Mithril from Grand's Island. I'm going to do a quick Mithril check before we continue. We have 12 Mithril. I think there's 15 in the game. 
But there's some further south. Wait, no. We have 14 mithril? Okay, maybe we do actually have all the mithril then. Yeah, Freya, we'll get the last two mithril. Okay. This is where we have to make a decision. So, there's 14 mithril that we have. I'm going to quickly double check. Uh, mithril locations. I think there might be one more missing, and that's it. We're missing one, we're missing one from way back. Just verifying that we actually do have all the mithril. Yep, there's no mithril there. Oh yeah, we're gonna need the dry orb. Um, stone. Drive. Dry stone. We can give the Taya, that's fine. Where? Which mithril am I missing? So there should be 15 mithril in the game. I'm making sure that I didn't accidentally sell it. Nope. Huh. Hmm. I don't know which one we would be missing. So two. Plus four, plus four, plus four is 14. We don't have it in another party member at the moment, do we? No, we don't. We are missing a mithril. Huh. I don't know where we would be missing it at. Wait. There's one spot that I know that I have a tendency to forget about. It's because I'm busy. And it's now accessible. So it might have been one of those, oh, I'll go find it later situations. Heard a rumor that a handsome boy is leading the devils now. Why I gave him Sir Ashtel's accent, I have no idea. Oh yeah, what do you have to say? Red Baron is looking for something at the ancient tower. No one returned from that trip. I didn't go, I was smart! Good weapons or armor, huh? I, I saw them. Man, many devils coming from the tower. There. I think... I think he was looking for the Holy Sword. Please don't tell anyone I told you. I don't remember what's even here in the treasury. Fairy powder. Meh. And healing water. I mean, healing water is useful. It's a full heal. But that was in those chests way back at the start of the game. But that's not the one I was looking for. What I was looking for... Is here. That's where the priest is, by the way. Oh, yeah. Just going to talk. Why am I guarding the kitchen? Probably because you have a passage from the dungeon in here. Specifically, there's a piece of mithril right over here. And I don't remember if I got it. Yep, I did. Okay. I honestly don't know where the mithril's at. Well, I guess I'm going to go without for now. Um, I may end up going back and trying to find where I lost it at. Because it's really abnormal for me to lose Mithril like that. But then again, I also had multiple years in between videos, so... You want another tower? Impossible. It's buried in the ground, but there's no way in. Um, so yeah. It's not that big of a deal. Usually I don't need 14 Mithril items. But that's what we're actually going to go do now. And that's the reason why we may end up not having any combat, because... Crafting Mithril Weaponry is very random, and I'm going to show some of it. I don't know if I'm going to show all of it. 
So, what you need to do is go back up. You see where the waters are a little narrow? Well, you use the dry stone on those waters because the game tells you that ever. And now. Nick, I've met you somewhere before. Welcome to the Hidden Dwarven Village. It's a normal item shop here. But the reason why they're here is to let you sell things. Welcome. Let's go ahead and save. A book, Life in a Cave. Very dangerous outside. We can't go to Gallum, but we have to leave here very soon. Uh, they don't leave here for the rest of the game. They're they're here. We're just searching for things at the moment. Treasure chests, that type of thing. Yep, that's the exit. There's a lot of that in this place. So I mean, there's a treasure chest down there. Just need to remember how to get to it. I mean, I can tell you exactly how to get to the um, weaponsmith. I have that ingrained into my eyeballs because of how often I've done this. Healing water. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. At this point in the game, I would only expect to ever receive healing water. Dwarven Blacksmith is very good. You can place a custom order with him. So, the way this is going to work is that we craft a weapon specific for a character. Now, there's a few things wrong with this. Oh, hey, look, there's a demon rod. Um, there's a few things wrong with this concept. I'm pretty sure it's the other stairwell. Yeah, it is. This is to the other treasure chest, which is healing water. Oh, wait, ring, sweet. I needed this. So, this item is quite possibly one of the best items in the game, and I don't think anybody can use it other than Vickers for us. So normally, the White Ring is usable by heroes, which Bowie is a hero typically, but in this game, Bowie's not a hero. The White Ring can also be used by Vickers, yep, which means we can give them a defense bonus. The other thing the White Ring does, though, is that you can use the ring to cast Aura 2. It's the only reason why I'm hesitating to even give it to Road because Aura 2 would be extremely helpful on a second character, and Rude has Aura 1. But I'm going to give it to him for now. Okay. So. This is the stairwell that we have to take. We go up here. Again, I know this so well. Mithril is very hard to find. Go see the blacksmith if you have any mithril. All right, save state. This is the point that we have to save state. So this is how it works. Welcome to the Dwarf Craftsman. We can create a great and special weapon for you if you have some special material. What kind of material do you have? Mithril is the only material in the game, by the way. Not even just the only one he'll take. It's the only material in the game. So, we craft a weapon for a specific character. Um, what we have in our party is likely what we're going to keep in our party. So there's certain characters that we're going to care about their weapon. The problem is that we don't have the correct characters for normal mithril weapons. So, um, weapons, let's take a look at the mithril weapons to see what our options are. So, um... I should probably share this with you. So let's go ahead and add a window. Window capture. Actually, I'm going to pause this for a moment. One moment. Just so you don't see a bunch of extra extraneous stuff. 
Ah! Alright, sorry about that. Um, if I wiggle my mouse around, it tries to minimize everything, and that causes some glitches in both OBS and my emulator. Anyway, to well, what's on top of my face at the moment is the Mithril weapon list from um, Shining Force Central. Shining Force Central is the... I'm looking at the camera and none of you can see me. Um, Shining Force Central is the oldest and definitely the most comprehensive fan site for Shining Force games. And it's also, coincidentally, the first website I ever visited. Well, back when it was Moogie Shining Force 2 webpage, but whatever. Anyway, um, so these are a list of Mithril weapons that we can get. Uh, there are certain weapons that we are specifically going to want to go after. Gizarm is the biggest one. This is by far the best weapon in the game for a ninja, because one, it's plus three attack above the ninja katana, and plus five, uh, um, plus eight attack above the regular katana. We're almost certainly going to get critical swords, which is what they're currently wielding, and yeah, that's plus ten attack. On top of it, the instant crit rate is great. Um... So, actually, let me move this over. Now you can see me again. And let me bring up Excel while I'm at it. Oh, Excel got minimized due to the stupid shake. Okay, so this is our party. We have bird battlers. So what we want to do is take a look and search for BDBT. These are the weapons that bird battlers can wield. They're hardly anything because bird battlers are terrible. Um, I thought about and decided against, I think, let me open up the editor to make sure I actually decided against it, unless if I, you know, accidentally decided that I was going to do it anyway. Okay, no, I did not. Um, so one of the things that I've thought about, and a common way of quote-unquote fixing Shining Force 2, is to add bird battlers to a list of units that can use the Levanter. Levanter is only possible to be used by heroes, and after the next battle, you get the best weapon in the game. So, Levanter is not a very useful weapon normally. No reason to create it. In this case, we don't even have those people, so what we want is a counter sword for Bubby. So, I'm going to note that down. I'm going to put it in my spreadsheet. Um... I'll put it here for now. Oh, I have a, something in my clipboard. Insert. But the counter sword can also be um, wielded by a Baron or a Red Baron. So what we're gonna end up doing is that we're gonna create a weapon for a Baron or Red Baron instead. They have a better weapon though, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, so counter sword gives you an increased chance of critical attack. But Ground Axe, on the other hand, gives you plus one movement. And plus one movement is awesome. Also, there's the Rune Axe, that is three extra attack. All of these are great weapons. But, if I'm just making a weapon for a Baron, I can get any of these randomly. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If they were equal, it would be a one in seven chance. They're not equal, by the way. I actually figured out the last time I played through Shining Force 2, it's a lookup table. And what it's doing is it's rolling a die and then looking up the value on the lookup table for it. The, re the method that I did this is that I figured out how the, um, whatchamacallit, um, random seed works in Shining Force 2. So you may have noticed, uh, actually no, you probably wouldn't have because you haven't been watching me when I've been grinding up levels for the um, characters that are being left behind. But if an item breaks, I may reload the save state and then move around a bunch. The reason being is that the way um, the seed works is that every time that you move the cursor um, on a screen that's not a menu, it re-randomizes, it goes to the next seed. So as a result, I figured out how to move exactly precisely in the exact same way every time to get the exact same seed so I can get an idea as to, okay, what's the actual tape lookup table like? And yes, I am that ridiculous. Okay, so, um, so yeah, we're going to want a counter sword for our Baron. Got it. Um, what do we want next? I'm just gonna move this up here. Um, Bow Knight archers. So we've got hyper cannon down here. 
And we also have Grand Cannon over here. Hyper Cannon's plus 40, Grand Cannon is plus 43, and can cast Muddle. We're going to go after Grand Cannons. Grand C. Jaha, who's a wizard? So. Wizards are interesting. So let's go ahead and highlight Wiz. So the crappy weapon's a great rod. We absolutely don't want a great rod because we don't attack with our wizard. We have magic for that. Um, there's mage staves, which we already have a couple of mage staves. We don't want that at all. There's a supply staff, which allows you to attack an opponent's MP. It's an interesting idea. Usually it's better to just kill the opponent. There's the freeze staff, which normally in the game, I love the freeze staff because it's an item that you can use to give you a range three attack. And most times sorcerers don't have range three attacks. However, we're playing a randomizer. I think all of our care, all of our mages have range three attacks. So I have no need for the freeze staff. The only staff that I want is the mystery staff because regening two MP around is perfection. However, Jaha doesn't necessarily need it. So he's probably the lowest priority. But we'll keep that in mind. Slade, Brass Gunner, we already know. In fact, let's just paste that in there. Okay. Uh, Kiwi. Kiwi's a Master Monk. We want Giant Knuckles. It's plus 55 attack. It's almost as good as the evil... Uh, Evil Knuckles. Evil Knuckles is plus 60. So, technically, we could go with the Misty Knuckles, which would allow us to remove the opponent's MP as part of attack. Um, again, though, just kill them. And I'm a lot more effective at killing them with an extra plus 7 attack. So, we want Giant... Uh, Luke's a ninja. We want Gizarm. And by the way, Gizarm's the most rare weapon in the game. Um, there is a similar rarity weapon. I think it's... You have to get in a weird situation to have that option. If I remember right, you have to try to make a weapon for a Baron. For reference, when we're trying to get the Rune Axe, we're not going to make a weapon for a Baron. We're going to make a weapon for a Gladiator because there's a smaller pool of weapons that we get an option of, thus it's a higher chance of us getting the right weapon. Anyway, um, speaking of, Baron. Baron, we wanted Runax. Actually, wait, did we want a Runax or did we want Ground Axe? Ooh. So, I don't care about the Muddle effect. Muddle's useless as a spell. Um... Plus 39 attack versus plus 42 attack. It's three extra attack, but one extra movement is awesome. So what I do if I have spare mithril and I want to make a weapon is that I'll make both and just keep the ground axe equipped and then switch to the rune axe when I attack. It's not the greatest plan because that's a waste of a piece of mithril in my mind. But we're going to have two spare... We're going to have multiple spare pieces of Mithril. So I'm going to choose Ground Axe for now. Uh, Atlas Axe is nice too, because Blaze 3. But I frequently just have three axes in the hands of any Baron in the game. Um, Vickers. Yeah, we should do that, because... No. Excel. Anyway, um... People who can't equip weapons can't have mithril weapons made for them. Vickers. Vickers are interesting. So, typically, a mystery staff is the best option for Victor Vickers 2, because regening MP is awesome for any caster. The problem is that the goddess staff is also awesome. The goddess staff allows you to use aura too. Remember what I had said before about I have a white ring, I wanted to equip it on a different Vicker so I can use it to cast aura too. So, what I'm going to do is that. 
And most likely, I'm going to get an extra weapon with Rick and with, um, where'd she go? Janet. Um, I'm not going to get the Atlas Axe because as much as Blaze 3 is awesome, don't get me wrong, I would love to have Blaze 3, I'm Archer Force. I have range 3 attacks everywhere. Having a heat axe in the inventory for Blaze 2 is probably good enough. So, this is the point where things go straight to hell on randomization. Because, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, so these are Mookie's recommendations. Um, it's very similar to what I just said, oddly enough. Um, she actually recommends Rune Axe over the Ground Axe for those classes, just because, you know... It's useful. Another thing I could do is throw the Mist Javelin in and give it to our Pegasus Knight. That might not be a bad idea either. I don't know. We've got 14. I'm using 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I do actually have enough for one more. But again, random. Oh, I backed out when I didn't mean to. Okay. Unfortunately, the object that we're most likely to get is a stupid critical sword. So, um, first off, let's start making a weapon for ninja. The reason why I'm choosing ninja is that, uh, ninja, no, ninjas can't get counter swords. Never mind. Um, Bowie. For Bowie, it'll cost 5,000 gold pieces. Wondering why I was saying that I might be Lepora again? This is why I can't actually afford all of it without selling weapons. Luckily, we have plenty of weapons to sell. All right, great. Please stop by shortly. I'll surprise you. So what we could do is do our entire order of Mithril right now. That's a terrible idea because we're going to be reloading a whole heck of a lot. That's the reason why there's an exit right there. Told you, I know this path oh so well. I have done this blindfolded many times. All right. Wait, what? But I can't use Levanther. No one in my party can use Levanther. Game. That shouldn't have been possible. Okay. I seem to remember this being an existing glitch. This is not an Archer Force 2 glitch. This is a Shining Force 2 glitch. This should re-randomize it because I had gone back and forward again. Also, I'm not moving the same pattern as I did before. Oh yeah, that person moving around in between there is my way of telling if I've redone the seed or not, because they'll be in a different spot. Critical sword, no. Critical swords are useless. We have critical swords. This is what I meant by, uh, I might be reloading a whole heck of a lot. Um, sure. Barons are not ones that you usually want to make weapons for, but we actually want a weapon that barons can have on top of the ground axe. So if I get either of those, you notice that that person's in a different spot again. Again, the seed changes. That's what tells me that the seed's changed. Counter sword. That is in fact what I wanted. All right, we've got a counter sword. Yeah, go ahead and pass it to uh, Chester for now. That's fine. All right. Chester, counter sword, give to Bowie. Swap it with the evil shot. Equip your counter sword. 
And congratulations, Bowie has the best weapon in the game for him. It's not a good one. So, um... I'm just going to do italics. Indicate that we've got it. Okay. Save. Do this again. Ah. I think I'm going to do this off camera. Because this is going to take a while. Uh, or should I not? I kind of want to do all of this on camera. Thinking about it. So here's my reasoning. Because this is an integral part of the Shining Force experience. Every Shining Force 2 player that goes through Mithril does this including saving and reloading, because it's really a crappy mechanic that you're getting random weapons. I don't understand why they did it that way. Because if you know about the game, you know what weapons are good. Buster Shot. That's not what I want. Not even close. That is the worst of the archer weapons. Cool. Uh, how about Jaha instead? And if I remember right, this will also give Jaha the worst of the weapons, which would be Great Rod. Yeah, if I remember right, the way the game has their tables set, they put Bird Brains in the same group as... Supply staff. No. You don't want a supply staff. I mean, it's better, but... Um, so yeah, they put bird brains in the same group as heroes for what table to look up. Unfortunately, here, uh, bird brains can't use Levanther. They really should be able to. I'm genuinely tempted to go back and then edit Levanther to let me use it as a bird brain. Just because that poor weapon, it's actually a good weapon. It's just useless. Buster Shot. Notice that it's the same on the two archers, but since I'm using the same seed. Um, so instead, let's try a Vicar. Um, so yeah, I am really tempted to just make that edit. The game really should have let Bird Brains have it, because they're not a good class. They do not have any way in the game of using an item to get a ranged attack beyond the Evil Rings. Holy Staff. Holy Staff regenerates HP around. That is not something I care about as a Vicar. If it was a Goddess Staff, I would consider keeping it. If it was a Mystery Staff, I would definitely keep it. Okay. I think I will go after the Levanther. Which means menu, undo save state. Nope, I still have the counter sword. Oh well, too late. I thought I would have been able to undo that. I'll be back. Alright, um, I'm not done yet, but I wanted to point out that yes, I did get a Gizarm. Not actually doing too bad on the reloads at this point. Um, so I did go back and actually reload from the game save that I made. So now um, Bowie does in fact have a Levanther. I just have it in Sarah's inventory. I'm going to edit the game to allow Bird Brains to equip Levanthers because... I decided, one, it's more fun that way, two, Bowie needs all the help he can get, and three, it's a common thing to do in the game for Shining Force 2 anyway. Probably should have been that way, given that I can create a Levanther by examining my own inventory, or trying to make a Mithril weapon out of my own inventory. Anyway, so let me show you how I'm doing this at this point. Um, so I messed up a little bit when I had talked before about the um, random seed. Alright, we're going to create for Freya. So, 
Oops, no, I did not want to say yes. So what the seed is, is not, and the moment I say, uh, I actually talk to the person, the seed is done. It's actually done the moment I enter this place before giving the mithril. The seed afterward is irrelevant, basically. So in this case, I have a Miss Javelin. Miss Javelin is actually what I wanted, isn't it? Uh, Miss Javelin. Miss Javelin. Yes, that's actually the best weapon for Freya. Which means that by reloading the state and making it for somebody else, like, say, for instance, Screech. I mean, it doesn't matter exactly character, what matters is the class. For making it for Screech, instead, I'm either going to get a Great Rod, because it's the only non magical weapon on the list. I don't remember off the top of my head whether the table was based off of non magic versus magic. I don't think it was. I think it's based off of highest attack. Which means this should give me a Mystery Staff, if I'm remembering right. Nope, Great Rod. Okay, it actually is based off of magic versus non magic. Well, which means this would probably give me another Gizarm. Um, I don't need anybody else to get a non-magic weapon at this point. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually going to make this for Freya. Even though Freya's not in my party, Freya's on the edge of whether I'm going to have him in my party. So, I figure this is probably a good thing to do. Miss Javelin. Freya can get the Miss Javelin. Yes, that is the best weapon in the game for a Pegasus Knight. His attack is now actually good. And we're going to do another attack comparison with everybody. By the way, it's been a half an hour that I've been doing this. Um, so, yeah, the position of that person now is what the seed is based on. That person I was identifying earlier. Um... Let's go with Screech. So we go back, up, in, up, left, oops, left. Like, that person's positioning only matters for the next weapon I make, not the current weapon. That was the part that I was messing up in my head. Supply staff, no. Um... What would happen if I gave it to an archer? So supply staff on the mithril list is third best magic weapon. Or, or alternately worst magic weapon. So we might end up with a grand cannon. Or not grand cannon. Grand cannon's what I want. I'm not sure what we get. Anyway. It's a lookup table thing, and I should probably dig out that posting that I made of this. It's Buster Shot, yeah. Okay, so that means that we have to go back at this point, leave the Dwarven Village, and re-enter it. Because the random seed is stuck on something that we don't want. Then we go through here again. That person's in that position, that gives us an idea as to what the seed is. Save state. So, for reference, I'm only using save states to speed things up a little bit. Um, normally, I actually just save and reload, actually. Unfortunately, what we want is the best weapon for each of the classes in the game at this point, which is not great. Oh yeah, just done done me. I, for the one that was a, uh, the Mist Javelin, I probably could have gotten Giant Knuckles out of it, I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm tired at this point. Grand Cannon! That is, in fact, what I want. Look at Slade's attack. 91 on an archer. Plus 14 compared to the Great Shot. 
Jones. I mean, even on Tyrin, who's my most recent one with the Nazca Cannon, it's still plus 10 now. But 91 attack on Archer, yes please. Alright. So yeah, I'm going to be doing this for a while. again. You don't really need to see me do this. So while I was doing this, I decided to go look up the table that I had written up. Uh, this is from my old live journal. I'll include a link in the description because this is a public post. Um, these are the tables as far as I've been able to figure out the, that way. So, again, it's only possible to do this with save states because you're effectively saving the random seed that way. So, we can tell, like for instance, um, when I... So, I'm going to use Freya for an example. Would that make the most sense? Um, I mean, Master Monks have the highest chance of getting their thing. But let's go ahead and use Freya for an example. Okay, so we've got Freya. I know, you all can't see it here. Let me uh, shrink things a little bit. So you can sort of see what I'm doing. There. Uh, shrink it a little bit more. There we go. That should be good enough. You can see what I'm doing this way. So, um, all I did was try to create a weapon for Freya, who's a Pegasus Knight. Pegasus Knight is all the way on the right, table-wise. So I've got Valkyrie, Miss Javelin... Halberd or Holy Lance as my options. And this time we get a Halberd. Halberd, as we look up, is in these lines. So, if we were to instead try to get it from a hero or bird battler, we would end up getting a counter sword. If we were to look up for a sorcerer wizard, we would get a freeze staff. For a ninja, we'd get a ninja katana. For a vicar, we'd get a goddess staff. Gladiator, we get a ground axe. However, bow knights, we get a grand cannon, which is actually one of the things that we want. And master monks, we get giant knuckles, another thing we want. So, instead of... Nope, nope. Uh, instead of making it for Freya, I'm instead going to make it for Zinc, who's a master monk. And now, when I exit and re-enter... I don't think I'm going to get to a battle tonight. I'm tired. It's nearly 10 o'clock. I should probably get to bed. I've got a long day tomorrow. This should give us a giant knuckles. Which is what we wanted for a master monk. Because, you know, Kiwi really needed to go up to 118. Alright. Okay. And now, let's go ahead and make this again. Um... You know what? We can make it for Jaro. That's fine. Even though I have no intention of keeping the weapon, this still gives me an idea as to whether I need to pursue this on anybody. Because at this point, what I need are Grand Cannons. Uh, I don't think I need any... Uh, I need Mystery Staves as well. Mystery Staves have a lower chance of giving me something. However, I'd be able to tell from Gladiator. So... If a gladiator were to get a rune axe, that means that a vicar or a sorcerer would get a mystery staff. Heat axe. Alright, if a gladiator gets a heat axe, that means I'm in this area. None of these things are actually things I want. So, that is a reload and leave. See? Probability. Science. 
So the main posting that I had posted was basically that humans suck at probability. Um, what seems to be the hardest thing in the game to get isn't. So, for instance... Um, the easiest thing to get in the game is probably Misty Knuckles rather than a Heat Axe or a Critical Sword. But I always remember getting Critical Swords constantly when I try to make items. The reason for that is that it's not anything I'm ever going to want. So that's the thing that I remember. Make for Jaro, that's fine. Honestly, I can just make it for a Brass Gunner. Uh, no, I need to make it for a Sorcerer Wizard would have actually worked. Or a Vicar. But anyway, um, humans suck at probability. It's a thing that's very common. Um, the Monty Hall problem is a good example of this. And for reference, I have a bachelor's in mathematics that I finished paying off today. Nice. Um, I have a bachelor's in mathematics, so Atlas X. Okay. Atlas X means that I'm in this big section. Uh, I don't want any of those things. I already got a Mist Javelin, which is the thing that I would have wanted from Pegasus. So, nope. That's a reload. Walk outside, walk inside. Anyway, um, Monty Hall problem is basically, uh, it's from the, uh, game show Let's Make a Deal. That was in the US in the 70s, early 80s. Anyway, the concept behind the Monty Hall problem is that you have three doors. Door number one, door number two, and door number three. And Monty Hall, who knows what's behind the doors, goes, All right, would you like to open door number one, door number two, or door number three? Uh, at that particular point, you have a one-third chance of choosing the correct door. That's fine. Um, let's say you choose door number one. And all of a sudden, Monty Hall goes, all right, let's see what would have happened if he would have opened up door number three. They open up door number three, and there's a goat behind that door. Then Monty Hall turns to you and goes, all right, would you like to stay at door number one, or would you like to change to door number two? And the Monty Hall problem is basically, do you change? And the answer is yes. The reason why is that Monty Hall knows what's going on. If you actually write out the probabilities table for it, it makes sense. Namely, okay, you've chosen door number one. At that particular moment, it could be behind door number one, two, or three. However, Monty Hall opens up door number three. So at the time that you chose it, you had a one-third chance of being right. At this point, you have the option of changing. When you change, you are taking a 50-50 shot. So your initial guess would be a one-third chance of success, your flop would be a 50% chance of success. Supply staff. That's the lowest end. I don't need that. Yep, this video is only going to be getting weaponry. I was really tempted to just edit the game to just give me the weapons that I need and deduct the amount of money I'm spending. Because this is going to take a long time. Time. That's why I keep pausing the recording until I have something to say or something to show. Alright, so what we're looking for is either, since we're doing this on a sorcerer or wizard, we're looking for either a free staff or a mystery staff. Those are the two objects that we want. And by the way, when I did this, I spent like about five hours figuring out that table. I'm really proud of the table. That's why I wanted to find it. Supply staff, no. I might be accidentally not causing enough of a random seed. So let's do that. So I wasn't paying attention to the position of the person in this area to know if I had changed this, my seat or not. Hopefully I don't have this music in my dreams like it did the last time I played Three Turning Force 2. Ugh. Uh, 
Oh man, remember live turning. I mean, I don't want to touch it now because, oh boy, does it have a lot of problems now, mostly because it's owned by the Russians, but um, it was nice having a place to write things down. Free staff, all right. I don't want a free staff, but this is useful. The reason why it's useful is that in the same column as free staff, so these are the free staff, is Grand Cannon, and Grand Cannon is one of the items I want. So if we switch it to Taya, we should get a Grand Cannon. Assuming that my table doesn't have an error. I'm not saying that my table's perfect. This is not something that I, um... Whatchamacallit, uh... Looked at code or anything like that. Although there is actually a project that has deconstructed Shining Force 2 from assembly. Yep, Grand Cannon. So, uh, my ta table, you'll notice, will have 17 entries in it. Uh, it's entirely possible that there's actually 20 entries and just a bunch of repeats. These are just all the unique entries. So yeah, we don't want to make the object on a um, bow knight, because bow knights only have three weapons, and we won't be able to tell the difference between something that would normally give us a mystery staff, which is a relatively low chance of success, or something that will give us a um, free staff, which we don't care about, and has a higher chance of success as far as we can tell. What I don't know, and what would make sense is if there is more to that table. Like, repeats of the table, I mean. Great Rod. Great Rod puts us in this area. We don't need anything in that area. Please tell me I didn't reload from... Okay, no, I didn't. Good. Okay. Now let's go back out. And back in again. This is why I'm trying to come up with good content to show you all and talk to you about. So I might as well scroll down a little bit to show you my little odds thing. So the odds of gaining a um, Grand Cannon is 7 out of 17. As far as I can tell. Admittedly, I am not certain about this, because, again, there could be repeats of the table, but... Um... Oh yeah, that was the other thing. Um, so there's a mistake in uh, Moogie Shining Force 2 website for Mithril items, and I've emailed her about this before, but... That website hasn't really been updated in a long time now. But um, she had mentioned on there... Uh, I can probably switch and... Nope, that doesn't work. Like that. Okay. So um, she actually has mentioned in there... Under Magical Mithril Weapons, a Wish Staff and a Mage Staff. You actually can't get those. It's not actually possible to get those weapons in from the Mithril dealer. They are counted as Mithril weapons, they're just not in the table. Supply staff, no. Just leave. the dwarf um what else i can talk about for this so yeah i did this testing back when i was unemployed this was before i was hired at my current position um 
I had a lot of time to myself because nobody was hiring in 2008. That was during the Great Recession. Basically the start of the Great Recession. Uh, it really hit in, toward the end of 2008, but still. Um, nobody was really hiring. So I was just sitting at home all day. Supply staff. No. I don't want a damn supply staff. This is what I mean by it could be that there's multiple entries in that table for the same thing. Because I seem to constantly get supply staves. I have spent nearly an hour and have done absolutely nothing productive other than get a few items. And I've got most of the items now at this point, I think. Yeah, I have seven pieces of mithril left. Okay. Great rod. No. I'm going to pause this for a while. I'll be back. And we're back. This is technically the second time I've tried to record the second part, but I didn't record any audio. Whoops. You'll notice I'm wearing a different shirt. This is a different day. It's actually three days later, I think. Uh, no, I was not working on it the entire time. I only started working on it again today. Um... So, we've got a couple of changes. Uh, here, let's go ahead and do the equipment. Uh, so, I did actually change the ROM to allow me to equip Levanther on two bird brains. I decided, well, the poor Levanther never really gets a chance of being used anywhere else. And, but we... Uh, bird brains get the shaft on this. Um, I'm going to have to add that to my randomizer for recommended changes. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, I forgot to sell off Chester's Great Shot. I tried to sell off everybody's old weaponry because I needed the money badly. Um, so, Jahaz now has a Mystery Staff, so he'll lose 5 defense but gain MP regeneration, which is really nice. Admittedly, Jaha has so damn much MP that I don't even know if that's needed, but whatever. Uh, he was one of the ones that I was a little iffy on. Um... May now has a Grand Cannon. Uh, Luke has a Gizarm. I believe you saw that one, though. Uh, Rode. I don't like dropping Rode's defense even further. But at the same time, kinda need to have regenerating MP on the character with uh, Aura. Um, Rick, I, gained, I gave him both the Mystery Staff and the Goddess Staff, so I'm not going to ever equip the Goddess Staff, that would be dumb. But the Goddess Staff, you when you use the Goddess Staff, you cast Aura too. So, having each of my Vickers with something that they can use to cast Aura too sounds like a great idea to me. Uh, let's see, going through... So Tyrin needs a grand can uh, has a grand cannon. Janet. So I gave Janet both the ground axe, which I think was the last thing I recorded, and the rune axe. So rune axe is plus three attack, but ground axe is plus one movement. I'm going to keep the ground axe equipped primarily, and then when I make an attack, I'll equip the rune axe. That's the idea, at least. And I still have the heat axe that way. I have a ranged attack as well. Oh, um, I did give Freya Miss Javelin. I think I may have recorded that. No, I don't remember anymore. Either way, the reason why I gave Freya Miss Javelin is because of any of the characters I might swap in, Freya would be the one. Sort of. So we know we have two characters remaining, or I know that we have two characters remaining that we have not gained yet. I don't know what classes they are, but I went through, okay, let's think about all of the classes that they could be. They could be any of the classes that are like, um... Sheila, or Peter, or any, um, uh, Randolph, there we go. 
um, where they don't use weapons, so don't have to worry about mithril weapons for them. Uh, they could be a swordsman, or a hero, I should say. If they're a hero, then I can equip the force sword that I'll be getting, that I'm required to get in the game anyway. They're fine. They could be a baron. If they're a baron, uh, chances are I'd probably be replacing another baron. So, not too worried about that. They could be a paladin. I'm not going to use them. I, I don't care what the paladin is. I'm not going to use them. And if I did decide to use them, I that's one of the reasons why I grabbed the Miss Javelin. Pegasus Knight. Miss Javelin. Um, it could be an archer. If it's an archer, I'm going to be swapping out one of my archers anyway, because I don't want more than four archers right now. So I already have four mithril weapons for the archers. I just swap the weapon. Uh, could be a gladiator. I'm not going to put a gladiator in the party. And even if I did, I'd be swapping out my baron, who has once more access for the gladiator. Uh, mage. I would probably be swapping out a mage. And even if I didn't swap out a mage, really, Jaha doesn't really need that mystery staff. I can give that to the new mage and have Jaha equip like a guardian staff or something. So, I pretty much have all of the classes that it could be. Oh, it could be another bird brain. I'm not going to add a bird brain to the party at this point. So, I think this is set. I think I'm good. So, let's go ahead and exit. Let me save state. And let's head back to Gallum and get ready for the next video. So again, there's been zero battles this video. I'm probably going to have to open up the video and figure out timestamps for, okay, at this point you can ignore everything again. Since I did just do a summary, the summary's gonna be good enough. I still don't know where that other piece of mithril went. That is bothering me a little bit. I'm not normally one to lose items. Anyway. Wait, did you say anything different? I think Gallum hasn't returned from the war against Grand Seal. Yeah, yeah, there's a reason for that. Okay, I'm going to stop here because I know plot happens immediately afterward because I triggered that the last time I recorded this. Hope you've enjoyed my lack of battle and lack of doing much of anything internet, and I'll talk to you next time. Also, I need to adjust the camera because I accidentally bumped the tripod song over a bit. Bye!